What's up YouTube? Uh, this is going to be a short video on uh, swarm traps. Um, this is my third year as a beekeeper, but the first year that I'm going to set out a swarm trap. So um, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and um, you know looking for different plans and things like that on you know uh, how to build a swarm trap and uh, what I decided to do was kind of combine things of what I saw with one that I bought. So I went to a, uh, a bee shop close to my house and they had uh, they had nukes, five frame nukes on sale and I thought well you know I'll give that a shot. It was, uh, it was 57 bucks and uh, this is uh, this is it. You know, it's your uh, it's your typical uh, nuke box. You know, five frames, it's got a landing board there, and the box. Uh, it's got an inner cover and a top cover. Standard size. You know, fits all your frames. Nineteen and seven eighths by nine and five eighths, I believe. So this is pretty standard stuff. And you know, I watched videos that had these in them, uh, these swarm, tr these nuke boxes in the videos, and they were using them as uh, swarm traps. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool, but. Uh, if I did that, maybe I could just use a deep, you know, a regular standard size deep. And then I thought, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe maybe that's not the right way to go because, you know, maybe it's a small swarm and they think it's too big for them and they don't want to stay, you know. I don't know, all kinds of different things. So what I did was, I decided to, uh, to make my own. And, uh, and the way that I did it was... Uh, you know, I used the standard dimensions, but I went and got um, some 2x2 two two plywood sheets at the local big box store because they're cheap, they're about five bucks a piece. And these are, um, I think I used uh, 3 8 is what I used. And uh, basically, you know, it's 24 inches square. So what I did was I just took and I cut it, boom, 24 inches across. So that 24 inches made it. 24 inches deep, and then I cut it to uh, the proper length, which is 19 and 7 eighths. And um, I had a couple of uh, one by tens laying around, and then I, I made the uh, the fronts form. So it's pretty simple. Um, here's a this is one that I made, and uh, you know it's a standard, same size as the one that I paid 57 dollars for. This one cost me about 15. Um, not including paint. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, you know, very easy to build. And, um, you know, it's it, uh, it, it fits uh, standard deep frames perfectly, just like it's supposed to do. And uh, the entry, these are, this is um, a one inch speed bit that I used. And it just, you know, side by side. And apparently, uh, from what people say, they, bees for some reason sort of like this configuration as an entry hole. I don't know. I'm not a bee. <laughs> Hopefully I live more than six or seven more weeks. <laughs> but um, you know and for uh, as far as uh, as far as a lid goes you know nothing fancy. It's just a uh, it just fits right on top you know. It's, it's nothing uh, nothing groundbreaking or earth shattering here. I actually, uh, I missed the cut on this. I actually cut this incorrectly. I should have uh, cut it about an inch or an inch and a half longer and then put the, uh, put the blocks on this end. But honestly, for me, it's not really going to matter too much because, you know, I'm going to screw this down. So I don't really care. Uh, so yeah, it's a miscut, but at the same time, you know, it's not really going to matter. The, um, the key as is, I'm finding with everything B is ventilation. And so I cut a, a ventilation hole here at the top. And then I also cut another ventilation hole here in the back. And uh, just took some screening and stapled it in there. Easy. Um, you know, again, nothing fancy, just needs to work. And uh, so the other thing that uh, that you really have to do on these is, you know, on, on the ends you need to um, either make a rabbit cut, you know, so you have a ledge for your uh, frames to sit on, and you can do that in a couple different ways. 
So here's the box. It's empty. And this is actually the second one. I, I made two of these. And I've, I've got uh, enough material to make two more at home. So I'll probably make those this week. But here you can see the hole on the inside with the, with the screening. Easy to staple it in there. Not a big deal. And then, of course, you can see right here uh, the rabbit cut that you need to make. It's for the ledge, you know, for the, uh, for the frames. You know, pretty standard stuff here. But, um, you know, the way that you can do that is you can actually stack material uh, and fasten it, however, with staples or screws or whatever. Or, you know, if you've got a router or uh, a router table, you can do it that way. That's the way I did it. It was pretty easy. And, um, but, you know, $57 at a uh, B shop a lot and you know I I bit the bullet one time just to have it and I, I, I made a jig out of it and I use it as a go-by but uh, you know this right here uh, the sides cost me uh, five bucks and you know the one by ten cost me I don't know seven or eight dollars maybe so you know I'm looking at about fifteen dollars into this and it's very simple um, you know it's, it's very simple construction like I say the top just uh, screws on bottom just screws on you know this is pretty pretty simple straightforward stuff there's no reason to go out there and uh, and waste a bunch of money you know if you don't have to you know uh, it just has to work that's all it has to do it doesn't have to be fancy doesn't have to be beautiful you know there you're not being critiqued on uh, <laughs> on your paid job or anything I mean you might be I don't know but um, you know it just has to work and that's that's what's important here so you know keep that in mind when you're doing this but you know uh, you know it's good to have things that go together properly and you know all that jazz but um, I guess my point is don't get all wrapped around the axle about you know is it perfect it doesn't need to be perfect it just has to work um, so uh, you know I'm gonna put uh, one of these traps out here in a couple minutes and you know I'll bring you along for that it's a little bit early here in West Virginia. It's uh, March the 17th, I believe. And um, but I've got six hives, and one of them is just bursting at the seams already. So uh, you know, I know that uh, pretty soon they're going to swarm, and um, I need to be ready. And I don't, I don't want to lose the swarm. So I've got a couple of apple trees over there, and uh, a couple of pear trees. I'm going to take a look at and put one of these swarm boxes in. Um, in one of them trees. I, I called a swarm my first year in a pear tree, so uh, I'm gonna do that. But um, let me uh, let me grab my uh, swarm lure that I'm gonna use. I got uh, swarm commander, and I also have lemon grass oil. And in this first uh, box, you know, I'm gonna use um, swarm commander because all the rave. You know, I'm gonna give it a shot and see how it works out. I'm gonna do what they say. But, uh, let me set this down. I'll get uh, everything ready. When you're uh, when you're baiting your swarm boxes, it's important to have at least one frame of uh, drawn comb because if there is a swarm in there, you know they're gonna um, they're gonna be more likely to stay if they've if they've got a, a, a frame of comb already built. And you know it's gonna have that bee smell, you know too. This one's got propolis on it. It's got all kinds of stuff on it. Uh, it's it's been here in my outbuilding through the winter time, and uh, you know, hopefully, it'll make it more attractive for the bees. And then the other ones are just going to be regular uh, foundation, wax foundation frames. But it's really important that um, you know you have stuff ready to go for them. Uh, you know, you want to attract them, but you want to keep them as well, right? So it's kind of uh, you know, uh, you bring them, but you want to hold them. <laughs> it's the hold that's important. That's what you want to do. So. You know, you want to give them every chance you can, and, uh, you know, I'm only here on the weekends, so I've, I'm a, I live 150 miles away from uh, my beehives, so I come up on the weekends. So, you know, for me, I don't have the option to come out every night and take a look at them, check on them, you know, all that stuff. I've got to, um, you know, just hope that on Friday afternoon when I get here that uh, somebody's occupied the, uh, the swarm trap. So, anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and get my stuff together and... Uh, See if we can get this figured out. All right, um, 
here's uh, the date and all the videos that I've seen, articles I've read, says uh, two squirts on the uh, inside of the top cover and then one squirt um, at the entrance. And so that's what I'm going to do. And uh, there's two there, one there, and on goes the lid. I'm just going to go ahead and screw it down and I'm going to take it uh, over to the tree and take you guys with me and show you, you know, which tree I'm going to put it in, how I'm going to put it in there and strap it down and all that jazz. So uh, here we go. Here's where I placed the, uh, the swarm trap. Now the reason I placed it like this is because um, the entrance is facing south, southeast, somewhere in there. So the sun comes up right over there and so it tracks this way across the sky and so you know I want to have um, as much sunlight you know hitting this uh, this box and this tree as I can now this right here is an apple tree this is a gala apple and so it's um, just boy I mean it's maybe a day it started to uh, to bud a little bit you can see the buds swelling up so but um, you know and if you can see uh, right behind me or right behind the uh, swarm trap that's where the beehives are and so you know it's a it's a very short trip from there to the swarm trap now there's a tree right over there um, that I caught a swarm my first year of beekeeping and uh, that was in a, in a pear tree it was in a moon glow pear tree and uh, it was crazy <laughs> I think my neighbors thought I was a nut when they uh, if, if any of them saw me running around because I, I was so excited but it was successful and so uh, I started out with two with two hives and uh, oh there goes a bee <laughs> I started out with two hives and uh, I ended up my first year with three so you know it worked out and then last year I caught three more or I didn't catch them but uh, I, spl I did some splits and uh, so you know it's pretty exciting business but <laughs> at least for me it is but uh, you know the, the girls are out flying today it's a little breezy for them and it's probably 45 or 50 somewhere in there and uh, I expect they're gonna find this pretty quickly so uh, we'll see what happens and uh, I'll definitely make another video if um, if I catch a swarm <laughs> and I'll do an update and uh, give you guys a good laugh. But, uh... All right, uh, that's about how I did it and um, you know, we'll see how it goes. You know, I hope that I catch a swarm and uh, you know, it's the weather's warming up and the bees are getting crazy and they're bringing a lot of pollen in yesterday. Um, this weekend I had uh, kind of a lot going on and I, things I didn't expect to happen. But anyway, what's, what's happening here behind me? So excuse my outbuilding. <laughs> it's kind of a wreck right now. It's, you know, spring cleaning. So, uh, But, you know, right here I've, uh, I'm making two log hives and... Uh, I've had a couple setbacks, but I think uh, I think it's going okay. So I think next weekend um, I'll have those ready to go, and I'll either set those out um, next weekend or maybe the weekend after. So you know, like I say, it's the middle of March right now, still here in the mountains. It, it's it's right cool. I mean, it's it's cool in the evenings and it's cooling down right now as well. But um, you know, I think that uh, I think those are going to be really cool, and uh, I'm gonna I have a video that. That I'm doing on those, and you know, it's just uh, I got to do the videos as I do stuff, and so I've got some things to do, like make the entrances. Um, uh, I'm, I'm putting in the um, you know framing for for the frames, uh, some supports for the frames, things like that, and um, I still have to set uh, this guy right here, this, this one, this big one. This is the bottom of the tree. I'm gonna tell you right now, that rascal weighed about 350 pounds. It took me and my buddy to get it in my truck, and um, about wore me out <laughs> but um, you know the, the problem is is that when that tree was cut down just a few months ago it was green and it's uh, it's drying out as I do this and so that's where I'm running into a few problems but anyway um, not to get off topic there but um, so you know thanks for watching my video and uh, please tell me if you know you know something I don't know and which I'm sure it's not hard to do. Uh, please give me some feedback and leave comments, ask questions. That's how we all learn, and I'm in this to learn. I'm, like I said, I'm in my third year of beekeeping, and 
You know, every day is a new day, especially here in springtime. So I'm getting excited. But uh, I hope everybody's doing good with their bees and get ready for spring. And uh, hopefully we all catch a lot of swarms and get lots of honey and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, so thanks. And if you don't mind, you know, subscribe. Click like or something like that, you know. Appreciate it. Ciao.